In this video, we're going to cover five different functionalities in Power BI that feels like a bug, but is actually a feature. We'll go through some hidden functionalities that you can only use using the right settings, some more bug-like features, and why we want to use them in the first place. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's jump in. So let's start with the most obvious one, which is the measure tables. Measure tables are a handy way to organize your measures within your data panel. And I listed this feature here because there's not really an official way for you to create measure tables uh, within the Power BI desktop itself. You need to uh, go through some hoops uh, to enable this. So to create a measure table, you need to create a normal table and convert it into a measure table. So you do that by creating an empty table here. We'll create enter data. I typically may name my calculation measure tables, calculations like this. We'll hit load. Now you'll see the table here at the top, the calculations one. And from here, all we need to do is move any of the measures that we have created into this, into this table. So we'll go to the model view here. We'll find the measures that we have currently here. Just do a control click and drag it there. And now from here, if you hide any of the columns apart from the measures, uh, pay attention to the icon of this table, which will turn it into a measures table. Apart from making it easy to organize your measures, it also pins the measure table above the other tables that you have in your data pane, which is normally organized alphabetically. This makes it easier to discover measures that you use within your report. Using measure tables is good best practice to always use because it helps keep your measures organized in one place. There are many other ways that you can organize your Power BI reports, which is something that I covered already in a separate video. The next one is to do with the slicer handles in the date filter. So when we bring in a date type column into our report and convert it into a filter visual, you'll notice that by default, you will have this range here that you can choose uh, between certain dates. Either you can choose from a date picker from the top here or using the sliders here at the bottom. Now, if you wanted to customize this slicer visual, you typically go to the format pane here and this all settings within this visual tab is where you would find you know, the properties that you might want to um, modify here. Let's have a look at the slider here because there is a section here. And as you can see, there's not much else that you can customize here apart from the color of the slider itself. However, if you wanted to change these icons to be circle and something a little bit less prominent, you can go to the properties tab here under advanced options, turn off responsive. This will change those handlebars into these smaller bars that you can use the same way that you use the, the other one. I found this useful in cases where I needed to save space in my report page because it allows me to reduce the size of this filter pane here without necessarily cutting off any parts of it because the one that we had previously takes up a little bit more space than the non-responsive version. I did, however, just found this feature by accident, and it would have been nice if it was available in somewhere more logical, like in the slider option here in the visual tab, rather than in an obscure properties section here. The next one are transparent colors. So let's say we want to change the background color of this slicer visual. So we'll go to size and style, and under background here, we'll be able to choose different colors that we wanted. The list of selection that you get here is based off of the theme that you have currently applied in your report. And if you wanted to be more specific with what color you want to use, you can go to more colors, which will allow you to, to define the kind of the hex code that you want to use in terms of color. However, in these color options, there's no really way for you to choose no color, which means uh, no color at all. If the setting that you're trying to use has a conditional formatting option, you can circumvent this by creating your own hex color using DAX. So what we can do is we can try to create a transparent uh, hex uh, DAX here, which will basically just write the hex code for transparent, which starts with two zeros and six Fs. I'll just need to start that with a hash. And 
all you need to do is for any color that you want to use a transparent color from, you click the conditional formatting here under field values, choose the transparent measure that you've created and that will apply a transparent color on that property. You can't really see it, but if I change the background color, for example, you'll see that it should, should pretty much blend in. I found this option particularly useful if I wanted to hide certain elements in a page, but keep them in the page, just not visible. So for certain things like invisible boxes or invisible buttons, uh, or hiding or showing certain things based on conditions, this has been pretty useful. Next is adding custom marker colors on your line charts. So let's bring in the calendar here, month, and let's bring in the measure here, uh, sales, which is basically just calculating the total sales per month. Let's convert this into a line chart like this. And from here, let's say we want to enable the markers so that we just see those points for every single month like this. And let's say we want to customize this even further by uh, changing the color of the markers based on certain conditions. So in a previous video that uh, we covered, we uh, we wanted to highlight, let's say, the highest and the lowest points of our sales, uh, which is uh, either this month and this month. So we want it to be green if it's at the highest and then red if it's at the lowest. And typically for this kind of functionality, you would go to the conditional formatting of the markers to do so. However, if you look at the color part now inside the markers, you'll see that there's no option for you to apply conditional formatting on the markers themselves. However, there is a slight bug that you can take advantage of to make this happen. So first of all, we start by creating the measure that we need to highlight the color, which has the logic to essentially change the markers. And I've already created here and I just copied it from the previous video that I was mentioning to you before because we kind of solved this problem already. All it does is it switches the color based on if the value that is in that month is either the highest or the lowest. So. Now that we have that measure sorted from the line chart itself, all you need to do is first convert it into a bar chart like this. Change, go to the columns and change the color of it to use the measure that we've just created. Under field value, we'll go to our calculations here under highlight color. And that will change the color of the bars. And now if you switch back to the line chart, there you go. So as you can see, it inherits the colors of those bars into the markers in our line charts. So this trick was something that I already knew a few years back and I'm actually quite surprised that it's still here after all this time because a simple fix to this would be to just enable the conditional formatting here in the color settings for the markers, similar to other properties. Lastly is to do with disabling the second axis in the combo charts. So when we create combo charts, uh, let's bring in month sales and uh, let's say, let's do a count of order IDs and let's use one of these charts here. So let's bring in a combo of this and let's say the count will be in the line axis. So it's not very obvious here, but the bar charts are essentially the sales, which is following the axis on the left, whereas the count of orders is this line here following the, uh, the axis on the right hand side. Now, now the reason why they're not in the same axis is because the line chart is significantly less uh, in terms of their actual value compared to the the axis here on the left. So if this was normalized, you would have the line chart all the way at the bottom here because the range is just wildly different. But let's say we want to make sure that they are normalized and following just one Y axis because it makes sense and we want to show it like that. What you would think, and from my memory, there was just a way for you to disable the secondary Y axis completely. But with this new kind of options in Power BI Desktop, there's no obvious way to do it. So if you go to secondary Y axis, you'll see that there is no options to disable it at all. You can set the range, uh, you can change the title of it, but there's not much you can do apart from, I don't see any other options to do so. However, what I found is that if you turn on the values, 
the values in the secondary y axis uh, section and then turn it back off that will disable the secondary y axis so now in this combo chart you're following the one axis here the the one for sales now it doesn't make sense for this scenario but this makes sense in terms of how you read this combo chart because now because the counts are uh, you know, in the tens and hundreds, whereas the sales are in hundreds of thousands, is gonna be at the bottom. And this is the kind of feature that you might want to use. And that's really it for this video. I hope you learned something new today. Some of these niche features are basically bugs that I encountered throughout working with Power BI over the years. And if you know of any other useful bugs or features like this, let me know in the comment section box below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so it to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.